Hi there guys. I've got a bit of an unboxing video for you today. Yesterday I was in my local uh, gun shop and I picked up this uh, Bushnell rifle scope. And here we'll have a look at the, uh, the end flap with the particulars on it. So this is a Bushnell Banner so-called uh, Dusk and Dawn scope. And it's in the usual slip top two-piece box. Of course, I've had this out of the, uh, the box before at the gun shop, but it wouldn't be a proper unboxing video if you didn't take something out of a box with it. So, of course, it comes packed up in some plastic, and it's got some styrofoam on it to, uh, to protect it. There's some warranty uh, information and so forth in the box as well. And this scope comes with the usual uh, inexpensive slip-on scope covers. They're not uh, terribly uh, tacti cool looking, but they do the job. I will probably replace those with some uh, flip open type covers eventually if I decide that I'm going to keep the scope long term. Now, this is a target varmint style of scope. You can see it's a fairly, uh, fairly big scope, and it is a 6 to 24 power variable scope. You can see it's set here to the lowest power at 6, and by turning the uh, adjustment we can go up to 24 power and it has an objective uh, lens of 40 millimeter uh, diameter see Bushnell's got their uh, their branding on it there and it is parallax adjustable as well at the uh, the front end now this is one feature that uh, is a little more uh, on an inexpensive scope if you have parallax adjustment it will generally be on the objective lens as opposed to uh, side parallax if you buy a higher end scope, you will generally have a third uh, knob here which will adjust for the parallax. And parallax is basically, uh, it's an apparent difference in the, uh, the image and the crosshairs from where they really are. So it has to be adjusted out. So basically the scope is essentially focused for a certain distance to eliminate that parallax error. And you can see if you've got parallax error, if you're behind a scope, and you have uh, the rifle rested very steadily. And if you can move your head side to side, and you can see that the uh, the image moves relative to the crosshairs, that means you've got parallax. When your scope is adjusted to uh, eliminate parallax, there is no apparent uh, Im image movement compared to the crosshairs at any given distance. So this uh, scope is adjustable for parallax to a very short distance. Uh, 10 yards or 10 meters. I'm not sure if these are in meters or no, sorry, I'm wrong. It is in yards. It says so right there. So we can adjust this down to uh, 10 meters. So obviously they've uh, considered using this for air rifles and so forth. So we've got 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 100, 2, 400, and we've got the, ins the sign out there at the very top for uh, infinity, but I've never actually shot to infinity before. But uh, most of the time, if you're back at 500 yards, you will be pretty much using that, that last symbol, the infinity symbol, and that is the end of your parallax adjustment. And you can see that it's uh, knurled up here to give you something to, uh, to hold on to when you're adjusting the parallax. Moving back to the, uh, the turrets here, they've got their uh, banner logo here to designate the model. And we've got the model number printed on the bottom as well, 716244. And this is a waterproof scope. There's the, uh, the specs once again, 6x24x40. By by and this is a Korean-made uh, optic, not made in uh, China like a lot of the uh, lower-priced optics are. We've got the Korean, uh, Korean folks made uh, involved in the manufacture of this item. This has got sort of semi-target turrets. And we've got these big uh, caps to cover the turrets up with. They're well knurled as well. And there's a rubber grommet on the bottom here so that when these caps are snugged down tightly, it should be uh, pretty much waterproof. I wouldn't want to have this thing out in uh, a heavy downpour without those uh, covers on because I'm not sure how waterproof the turrets would be. I'd be very surprised if they are, in fact, waterproof. And we've got uh, fingertip adjustable uh, windage and elevation. And as you can see here, it says one cl click equals one quarter minute of angle, which is very close to a quarter of an inch at 100 yards. And we've got uh, the direction on here, of course, to tell you which way to move. 
and on the uh, oh, get that to focus there and on the side of the turrets might make more sense to hold it this way you can see we've got a scale here and each of these uh, is one minute of angle between these and they've got the quarter minutes marked off on the lines and you can hear you can hear the uh, adjustment so there's a spring detent inside here which uh, holds the adjustments in place and gives you uh, an audible feedback when you make adjustments and you've also got a tactile feedback feedback because you can actually feel that snap into place and as you move up through the uh, the adjustment range there are some graduations underneath here which appear as you go up and from what I counted off um, I'm not sure if this is going to turn out to be true in practice, but it seemed that it had about uh, 50 minutes of angle from the very bottom to the very top, and about 40 minutes of angle uh, in windage from side to side. Now it remains to be seen as to whether that's going to prove to be the case on a target, but I'm going to have to wait till I get this thing mounted up on a, on a rifle and. Uh, and then I'll, I'll try it and see how much actual uh, adjustment is there, but it, like I said, apparently just by counting the clicks it looks like about 40, 40 uh, windage and 50 in, in elevation. Of course that's not necessarily all going to be usable elevation because once this thing is mounted up on the rifle, uh, the zero point may eliminate some of that, uh, that travel, which is why a lot of guys use canted uh, scope bases. 20 MOA bases are popular so as to get all your adjustment, <coughs> excuse me, to get all your adjustment in the uh, elevation area and not to waste any in uh, unnecessary depression. So we've got uh, basically the same style of adjustment for the uh, for the windage as we did for the elevation knob here. The scope also comes with a small Allen wrench. You can uh, loosen the uh, the cover up here, pull it off, turn it around to index it so when you get a zero you can actually have uh, the scale read zero on it. I should actually do that on camera here because I know the wrench I did see that wrench inside here, inside the packaging and that's a good feature to have, to have a, a zero point well, that's interesting, they actually put two two of these little tiny allen wrenches in here, somebody's probably missing one for their scope but it's a good feature to be able to zero the uh, the turrets so that you're not uh, constantly guessing as to where uh, you should go back to when uh, you know for instance if you have no wind conditions you'd be nice to be able to go right back to your zero mark so we can loosen up if I don't drop that too many times we can loosen up that uh, very tiny allen screw here and let's see if we can pull that off Sure, if there's one of those or two. There are two. No, there are three actually. So we've got three, three of these Allen screws, and they are tiny. So we'll loosen all of those up. And with those loosened up, you can pull the uh, pull that cap right off. So basically that just clamps onto this wheel here and you can turn this around so if you want to get your zero you can pull that off turn the uh, the whole thing around and line up the zero mark and then put your uh, tighten your screws back down it's kind of a cheaper uh, way to do this than some of the other more expensive scopes but uh, then again this is a fairly economical scope I've seen these listed online for, I think the best price I saw online was uh, about $150 US and one of the worst prices I saw was $285 uh, at Amazon here in Canada. So it certainly does pay to shop around. This one came from my, uh, my buddy's gun shop and he had as good a price on this as I could find anywhere uh, in Canada anyway prices on this sort of thing are generally cheaper in the US because there are of course uh, more vendors and more consumers and more competition so you will probably get a better price in the US and if you live overseas if you're in the UK or 
Australia, New Zealand, you will probably get a worse price because you have less competition and less consumers. So we're kind of caught in the middle here in Canada. So there's the cap put back on. So that's uh, a look at the adjustments. We'll look at the uh, one more adjustment on the scope. You can focus the uh, the scope for your own individual eyes by rotating the uh, ocular lens. I believe that's the correct term for this this lens, in or out to uh, to focus the image and the crosshairs. And that is is sort of secondary to your parallax adjustment. For instance, if I was at uh, 100 yards, I would index the parallax first. And once I had that set, then I would use the focus on the back to adjust for uh, my own personal eyesight. So, let's see, let's look at the, uh, the spec sheet here. I printed it off because I knew I wouldn't remember all the uh, particular details. So, uh, Bushnell recommends this scope for long-range varmint, silhouette, and target shooting. And it does come with the mill dot reticle. So the mill dot reticle, I can't really show it to you here. I could probably show it to you if I was out on the range, but it doesn't really work inside. But uh, I think there's a little image of the mill dot reticle. I'm sure most people are familiar with what it looks like. But that's kind of what a mill dot reticle looks like there. You can see the mill dots printed there. You know, they're kind of stuck on the crosshairs. And they will give you uh, a way to estimate range and target size and so forth and so on as well as a way to hold off kind of on the fly if you need to hold more elevation or or windage for a moving target or for uh, uh, gusts of wind or whatever they will give you uh, a means to do that and uh, this is a second uh, focal plane scope so the the size of the mill dots looks the same regardless of whether you've got the power set to a low setting or a high setting and that means that uh, the mill dots are not actually accurate uh, at all settings. And as you can see here on the power ring, the uh, this number 12, the 12 power is highlighted in red as opposed to all the other power settings which are in gold. So these are actually true mill dots or as close as they're going to be to being true mill dots at the, with the scope set to the 12 power. So you can't really use the mill dots in their... Uh, you know, for the purposes of estimating range and distance and target size and all that stuff, unless you set the uh, the scope to 12 power. And uh, let's see, let's go back to this uh, spec sheet here. So we've got, uh, let's see, we've got the mill dot reticle. We've already mentioned the, uh, the power and the objective uh, lens size. These lenses are uh, supposed to be fully uh, multi-coated and you can see there's kind of a greenish uh, color off them. And this is uh, Bushnell's Dusk and Dawn Brightness Coating. And it's a uh, multi-coated lens with, uh, I believe it's magnesium fluoride on the lenses. And that's to enhance light transmission so you get more clarity and you get you know a brighter, a brighter image through the scope. Oh, this is, by the way, a one-inch tube scope, um, which is more common on the uh, somewhat uh, more budget-priced scopes you generally get a, a better scope when you get to a 30 millimeter tube because you have, uh, you have bigger lenses, you have more adjustment range in the turret, but for one of these uh, economy priced scopes you generally get a, a one inch tube, which is, which is not bad, and I plan to put this on a 223, so it's not something you're going to shoot at an extreme distance anyway, so hopefully there'll be enough uh, enough windage and elevation in this to do the job with the uh, the 223 that I'm going to put it on. Um, let's see, oh, it's a, uh, it's a one-piece tube, obviously with the exception of uh, the uh, the ocular, moving ocular part and the uh, the focusing and all that stuff. The main tube is uh, is one piece of material, so that's good. There's no joints to fail around the, uh, the turrets and so forth. Some old scopes had a completely separate uh, midsection, and they were a little bit weaker because there was a there was a joint there between the tubes. Uh, let's see. This is a fairly long scope. It's uh, 16.1 inches long, or 409 millimeters, according to the spec. The eye relief from uh, where your eye is to the uh, the ocular lens is uh, 3.4 inches, or 86 millimeters. All right, one of the uh, the final specs on the scope is the weight, 
and it is 19.6 ounces or 556 grams. So, uh, moderate weight scope. Certainly nothing uh, compact, but then again, it is made for more of a, uh, a long range or precision style of rifle. Now, they, uh, the common thought on rifle scopes and rifles is that you should spend about the same amount of money on your, uh, on your scope as you spent on your rifle. And while that is an admirable way to get good glass, uh, it can get kind of expensive. Now, for instance, I have a uh, Bushnell 6500 Elite, and I've got it on a 300 Winchester Magnum. But And I, I like that scope a lot. However, it's quite a bit of money. Um, you're looking at the better part of uh, $900 to $1,000 for that scope to pick up a second one. And I would like to, you know, have another one of those at some point in time, or an equivalent uh, quality of scope. But I really just can't justify spending that much money at this point in time. But I'd like to have something a little better on my 223 than uh, what's on it at the moment, which is a fixed uh, 10 power scope, which is having some uh, some issues. So uh, a friend of mine had purchased one of these scopes the other week, and he mounted it up and headed out to the range, and he was having pretty good luck with it. And you know, normally you'd be a little nervous of a, uh, a scope in this price point. However, with a bush now, they do have their uh, lifetime limited warranty on it. So basically, from what I understand, if the uh, the product kind of craps out on you, if the adjustments all go to uh, go to hell on you, you can box it up and uh, send it back uh, with the $10 to cover the po cost of postage and handling and they will fix it up for you or replace it depending upon uh, how bad it's screwed up. Hopefully that won't be the case. Um, I am putting this only on a 223 so that shouldn't beat the, the living crap out of it. Hopefully it'll survive the uh, very moderate recoil off a of 223. But, as with all scopes, um, the only way to know if they're any good is to take them out and use them. So, unfortunately, I'd love to be able to tell you right now that this is a great scope or that it's a piece of junk. But I don't know either way until I've had a chance to put it through its paces and to use it a while. So, really the only true test uh, is a test of time. So, this being uh, an unboxing video, there's only so far I can go with this. But anyway, the next, uh, this will be, you will see this in the future, I will put this uh, on my Remington and I'll take it out to the range and run it through its paces. We'll see what the uh, the actual range of adjustments are and if they're accurate, if they're repeatable, and uh, I can give you my impression of the clarity of the optics and just a, a general uh, a general synopsis of, uh, of how I feel about the scope. And uh, you probably won't hear much more about this scope after that unless it causes me problems, in which case if it does cause me problems I'll, uh, I'll probably make a video about that, but with any luck, it will hold up and work for uh, for a while, hopefully a few years, and maybe at some point in time in the future, it will be replaced with a, uh, a higher end piece of glass. But uh, hopefully, this one will do for now. And if and if I do replace it with a uh, a better piece of glass, there's always a 22 rifle that I can put this on, or there's always something else in the wings that I can use another scope on. Anyway, I guess this is running long enough for uh, an unboxing video, so. Wish me luck with this scope, and uh, hopefully I get it out uh, this coming week and put it through its paces. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you in the next video.